So for fans of the iMac, we have news about a new M5 model launching soon. According to new findings in a future release of macOS 26.4, Apple software now lists a Mac identified as J833CT, which Apple Insider believes could be the upcoming M5 iMac. The new models expect to launch sometime after the M5 Pro and Max MacBook Pros, putting its release window somewhere around mid to late 2026. The M2 Ultra Mac Studio, for example, was announced in June 2023 and launched with macOS 13.4. So yes, the next iMac is in the pipeline and it's shaping up to be a chip refresh for the most part, though the M5 will bring some solid performance gains. Now, before we dive into the mysterious large iMac Pro, let's first talk about what to expect from the M5 version of the 24 inch iMac. Because while it may look familiar on the outside, the upgrades happening inside are where things start to get interesting. We've already seen the M5 in action with the MacBook Pro and iPad Pro built on TSMC's refined third generation 3 nanometer n 3 p process. It brings solid efficiency and performance gains over the M4. The M5 features a 10-core GPU with a neural accelerator in each core, allowing AI workloads to run up to four times faster. Graphics performance is set to improve by up to 45%, thanks to third generation ray tracing. On the CPU side, the M5 offers 10 cores in total, six efficiency and four performance, delivering roughly 15% faster multi-core performance compared to the M4. Apple's also upgraded the newer engine to 16 cores, increased unified memory bandwidth by nearly 30% to 153 gigs per second, and now supports up to 32 gigs of unified memory. There's even a new media engine which improves encoding and decoding for video workloads. All in all, this is a pretty solid internal upgrade, especially for tasks that leverage AI, heavy GP work, or multi-threaded processing. For the average user though, it's not going to be as noticeable when it comes to data usage like web browsing, office work, or streaming video. Still, this will make the iMac a far smoother, more capable machine overall, perfect for creative professionals who don't need a Mac Studio, but still want that all-in-one experience. But I wouldn't expect any sort of redesign. The iMac's design language is already iconic. The ultra-thin chassis, the chin, the white bezels. It feels like one of Apple's most uniquely Apple products you can buy today. And yes, I know the bezels are divisive, but they've grown on me. And considering the last design stayed around for a decade, I don't see the current design changing anytime soon. If you enjoyed this video so far, make sure you hit subscribe and the new hype button. It really helps a small channel like mine reach more Apple fans. And I've got plenty more coming as we head into Apple's 2026 product cycle. Storage is another area where Apple might make subtle improvements. The M5 MacBook Pro now features roughly two times faster storage than the previous generation. And so the iMac could see the same enhancements. There's also been speculation that the base configuration might be bumped to 16 gigs of unified memory and 512 gigs gigs of storage. That's not confirmed by the way, but considering the iPhone 17 now starts at 256 gigs, it would make sense for Apple to finally just base storage on its Macs. Even a small improvement like that would make the M5 iMac feel much more future-proof. Display upgrades are another interesting possibility. The MacBook Air is reportedly getting Oxide TFT LCD panels next year, which provides better power efficiency, faster pixel response, and more consistent brightness. While this isn't OLED, it's still a meaningful upgrade, and if Apple brings similar improvements to the iMac combined with minor chassis tweaks, it could feel more premium and even more modern, all without breaking the bank. Additionally, with the iPhone 17 adopting ProMotion for the first time, there's reason to hope Apple might eventually bring higher refresh rates to more non-Pro devices. ProMotion on the iMac would make scrolling and animations feel noticeably more buttery smooth. That said, I wouldn't expect any of these changes with the M5. This model's likely going to look identical from the outside, probably will come in the same exact colours. The new chipset is really the main upgrade, but internally, it's shaping up to be a pretty solid step forward. But while the M5 iMac will be a solid refresh for general users, what about those who want more power? Because ever since the M1 iMac launched, I've seen a constant stream of comments saying, when's the iMac Pro coming back? Or why doesn't Apple make a large iMac with a Pro chipset anymore? Now I've been speculating about this thing for years, literally years. Back when this channel was just getting started, I remember talking about a Pro class iMac that would replace the Intel iMac Pro and it's still not out. I've had beardless videos of me talking about how Apple could easily reuse the 27-inch chassis and throw in an M1 Pro or M1 Max chip and would all be happy. Instead, they gave us a Mac Studio and Studio Display, which if you think about it, 
kind of became the spiritual successor to the iMac Pro. Apple even said that themselves. So what's going on? Well, according to both Mark Gurman and Minshew Kuo, Apple has indeed been working on a larger higher-end iMac. In late 2023, they had said it should target a release sometime in 2025 or early 2026. It's reportedly going to feature a 32-inch mini LED panel, which would make it Apple's biggest iMac ever even bigger than the old 27-inch models. But isn't it 2025 now? Where's the iMac Pro? Well, unfortunately, it's been months since we've received any sort of update about Apple potentially releasing another large iMac. In February of this year, Gurn briefly mentioned that Apple's still probably going to eventually get around to offering a larger screen iMac, but he's not commented on the topic since, as far as we've seen. So the chances of an iMac Pro right now are very, very slim. Also, there's been confusion between what's a new iMac and what's a new display. Back in 2022, all those rumors about a 27-inch LCD iMac? Yeah, that turned out to be the studio display. So don't be shocked if people start claiming the 32-inch device is just another Pro display instead. Personally, I really hope that's not the case because it's been nearly four years since Apple discontinued the original iMac Pro and fans have been waiting for a proper all-in-one replacement ever since. So while chances of this releasing are pretty low, let's delve into what a mythical iMac Pro could offer. I'm expecting this to have a very different aesthetic, likely black bezels, space black finish, and no other color options, because Apple still believes bros don't want fun colors, they want different shades of gray. I can already picture it, matte finish, dark bezels, minimalist look, basically a spiritual successor to the old iMac Pro, but thin and sleeker. Now let's talk about power, because this is where Apple's machine will really stand out. The larger 32-inch iMac will most likely use Apple's Pro and Max level chipsets. With that kind of power, you're already looking at a true desktop workstation, basically a Mac Studio and iMac form, with a mini LED panel built right in. The larger body means Apple can finally fit a proper cooling system, something the 24-inch model just can't handle, so the performance ceiling will be much higher. And since the display is integrated, it will probably be tuned and color calibrated out of the box, making it ideal for creative professionals who just want an all-in-one setup without worrying about cables or desk clutter. Now yes, I can already hear people saying, wouldn't the Mac Studio be a better deal? Technically, yes, you can upgrade it later, pair it with the studio display or any monitor you want, and keep using that display long after the computer becomes outdated. But there's still something magical about the simplicity of the iMac. You plug it in, it's clean, it's quiet, it's beautiful. And for some users, that streamlined experience is worth paying for. Now, the big question is, how much would this 32-inch iMac Pro cost? We don't have concrete numbers yet, but I expect somewhere between $2,500 and $3,000. Yes, that's pricey, but it would make sense considering the 16-inch MacBook Pro already starts above $24.99, and this iMac would likely offer similar performance with a much larger mini LED panel. Anything cheaper would risk cannibalizing the Mac Studio, so that $2,500 to $3,000 range feels like the sweet spot. Still, it's kind of sad it's taken this long for Apple to revisit the iMac Pro idea. The delays really highlight how the desktop market has shifted. Most people nowadays buy laptops, and that's where Apple is clearly putting its focus. Meanwhile, the iMac has basically been frozen in time since 2021. Apple's keeping it alive by just updating chips, but only just. One thing that could explain the delays though is OLED. We've heard that Apple plans to transition the Mac lineup to OLED displays eventually, and if the large iMac is one of the first to make that jump, that could possibly explain why it's taking longer than expected. Maybe Apple's trying to future-proof this thing, because if they're going to release a $3,000 desktop, it better not be outdated in two years. Anyway, what do you think? Should Apple bring back the iMac Pro, or is the all-in-one era over now? Drop your thoughts below, and if you made this far, make sure to hit subscribe and smash the hype button. It really helps small creators like me bring you more deep-dive Apple coverage every week. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.